Hello and welcome to the Creator Weekly Live for the week ending October 1st, 2023. I'm Peggy Kay, and today I am coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area where it's starting to feel like fall. Also, I wanted to mention that you may notice that it looks a little bit different on the live stream today. That's because I'm currently testing Talk Studio from Streamlabs. This is part of my goal for doing these live streams is to try different live streaming platforms. Talk Studio used to be called Melon before it was acquired by Streamlabs, so you might be familiar with it. But that also means that the controls are a little bit different than what I am used to. So please bear with me if it looks like I'm fussing around. It does seem like I did not forget to unmute my microphone, so I'm, I think I'm off to a good start. All right. Also, just a reminder that you can get all of the updates and links for their, the updates, either by reading my blog, there is a post, there is a link in the description of the video, or you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter, um, which I thought I had text for. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. There's a link. Um, you can get my newsletter, subscribe at the link at the bottom of the screen. It's newsletter.peggyktc.com. All right. And I want to give a big welcome to everyone who's here live. Hi, Craig and Jolyn. Thank you for joining me. I'd love to hear what you think about this week's updates. All right, let's get started. The first thing I wanted to talk about today is an update to YouTube's community, uh, YouTube's advertiser friendly guidelines. Actually, that is not the first thing I wanted to talk about because I'm apparently a little scattered this morning. All right, so the first big, big update this week is that Google announced they will be shutting down Google Podcasts. Instead, all podcasts are going to be in YouTube Music. This is not a huge surprise if you've been following all of the updates YouTube has been making to their podcasting offerings. And if you're inside the US, you can see what podcasts inside YouTube music are like. You actually don't need to have the video playing, unlike the actual music where they stop playing the music if you switch to something else. Podcasts will keep playing in the background and so it's much more like a standard podcast experience. They said that there will be an option to migrate your podcasts from Google Podcasts to, make that a little bigger, um, there'll be an option to migrate your Google Podcasts to YouTube Music sometime next year. This shutdown is not happening until 2024. So there will be more information before it happens. The things they promised are a way to migrate your podcasts, a way to export a list of your podcasts that you can import into a different service if you want. And YouTube Music will have the option to add podcasts using an RSS feed, even if those podcasts are not hosted on YouTube Music. But obviously, they hope that people host their podcasts on YouTube Music as well. They are also going to increase the number of features for podcasters, making it easier for podcasters to 
post their podcast directly to YouTube Music with an RSS feed, for example. All those changes will be coming in 2024. So um, give it a try. If you're in the US, you might check the podcast in YouTube Music and see how it works. Send feedback if it's not working the way you want it to. It's still early days. That's going to roll out to more countries, obviously, before this change happens. All right, so that was the first big update I wanted to talk about. The second YouTube update I wanted to mention is that there is an update to the advertiser-friendly guidelines. This applies if you are monetizing your videos. There's updates to what kind of content you can have that falls under the controversial content policies. So there is a video on Creator Insider you can see on the screen right now. There's more details there. You can also view the advertiser-friendly guidelines in the YouTube Help Center. Uh, it has detailed information. There's a description of controversial issues. And then you can click the policy detail to see ex specific examples of how this policy will be applied. The difference now is that if you have content related to sexual and domestic abuse, you can now fully monetize that content as long as it's non-descriptive, non-graphic. If you have content about abortion, again, you can now fully monetize that content as long as it's not graphic. So this allows a lot more content that is uh, educational and so forth to be monetized. The last change has to do with eating disorders. And that is a little bit more restrictive. They've made those policies more in line with the YouTube community guidelines, where it says, uh, if you have content that is promoting binge eating, hiding and hoarding food, abusing laxatives, that kind of thing, you will not be able to earn revenue on those videos. So if you monetize your content and you talk about those kind of controversial issues, you should review the updated policy. So those are the big updates I have for YouTube. The next big update that I wanted to talk about is over on Reddit. Now, if you use Reddit, you know that they had a system of letting people give gold or silver coins to posts that they liked. This whole system was changed and the old gold and the other badges that people shared were removed at the beginning of September. They launched this new, <laughs> new platform now where you can actually earn money. We'll see how that works. So the idea is that people can give you gold that they actually paid for. And if you're eligible, you can then get a payout. So this is the new Reddit contributor program. And just a mention of what the eligibility requirements are. You have to be a US resident at least 18 years old. You have to complete identity verification. Your account has to be in good standing. And the important thing is in the last year, you must have received at least 100 karma and at least 10 gold from other Redditors. And a note that 
in terms of calculating the karma for the past year, they're only counting it from the time you get the first gold from other Redditors under this new system. So it should be interesting to see how that proceeds. There are some concerns, as always. First of all, anything where you are reliant on other people to give you gold or and so forth, really seems to encourage the kind of content that gets people riled up, gets people excited. That can be a bad thing. There's also concern that they're not going to do a good job detecting spammers and people who reuse content without permission. And that's another issue for people who are giving gold. Reddit has said under the current new system, if you give gold to a post and it turns out it is violating copyright, so it's removed, then Reddit just keeps that money. You don't get your gold back. And of course, the person who posted the copyright infringing content doesn't get anything. So that just kind of vanishes into Reddit's coffers. So it will be interesting to see how this actually works in practice. The other thing I wanted to mention at Reddit is that there is there are new settings for <clears throat> how your activities are used for personalizing ads. So they're changing the ad personalization settings you can see the post in the R Reddit community, but I really wanted to point out that the big changes include being able to opt out of some specific ad categories, for example, alcohol and gambling. And importantly, they are removing the ability to opt out of ad personalization based on your Reddit activity, except in select countries. They don't say which countries though. Um, what they say is that our advertisers rely on on-platform activity, the communities you join, leave, upvotes, downvotes, and other signals to give you ads you might be interested in. They claim that the vast majority of Redditors will see no change on their ads, but if you previously opted out of ad personalization based on your Reddit activity, you're gonna start seeing personalized ads. I think it's interesting that they say this is only going to apply in some countries and not others. Obviously, some countries have regulations about this. They don't say which ones. Um, I believe in the EU, it's required to allow people to opt out of ad personalization this way. So I have a suspicion it's the people in the EU who can opt out of this, but not being in the EU, I don't know. Now let's switch gears just a little bit. Of course, the hot, hot news every week has to do with changes related to generative AI. And there's more and more discussion and consternation that these big companies are going on the web using all of the freely accessible content to train their AIs. And then, you know, they charge for that or the AI spit out what is essentially copyright infringing responses and so forth. So one of the things that they're finally doing is giving people who have their own website options to opt out of having their content used by these 
AIs to train their responses. The latest is Google. And now they have a new setting in the robot's text file called Google Extended. Let's see. Uh, if you can see the Google Extended information there, you basically add this to your robot's text for your site, and Google will not include your site when it's training BARD or the Vertex AI generative API. So that includes future generations of models that power those products. If you don't want your content to be scraped up this way, used to train these AI models, check your robot's text setting. I'll note that <clears throat> you can also do this for the chat GPT bot. OpenAI announced these settings, again, for your robot's text that allow you to disallow the GPT bot to access your site. And I expect that the other big companies creating their own AI bots will offer this as well. I think Meta does and Microsoft, although I'm, I'm not sure, I think Microsoft may use OpenAI. So, this seems to be the course going forward. And I thought it was really interesting that this week there was an announcement from Medium, Medium, the blogging platform and community. Um, they're going to default no to AI training on what you publish on Medium. So they've got that built in. And again, we may see this for other platforms too, where you can just enable these robots text limitations with just a few clicks. Craig says, Google can scrape my forum content. All right, <laughs> it may be interesting. I think one of the things that I think is going to be interesting to see going forward. Now that there are options to turn off this training, the AIs are going to be trained on a smaller set of data, and that's going to introduce certain biases into the content. And it will be interesting to see if, for example, the AIs get even less accurate than they are now because the content they are re relied on to generate the accurate responses will be blocked. And the spammers who just generate a bunch of crap, they're allowing the AIs to train on that. So I think it will be interesting to see how this actually works in practice. Also, speaking of AI, Meta announced a bunch of AI updates this week. I have no idea why that web page is blurry, <laughs> but um, you can now create AI generated stickers based on text prompts. So that is going to be kind of a fun tool that they have. They're talking about AI tools on Instagram for video and uh, image effects, which is not surprising. And the other thing that they're talking about, or not just talking about, is social profiles for chatbot AIs. Now this is kind of weird and creepy to me, but you know, I am middle-aged, so maybe that's part of it. It says they introduced 28 AIs 
based on real internet celebrities like Mr. Beast. And you can chat with those AIs and follow their fake profiles on Facebook and Instagram. And it says uh, the pro profiles are curated by Meta and include posts with images generated from Meta's AI image generator. So it's a bunch here. You can see the list here. You can go to their post if you want to find them. They all have personalities supposedly. <laughs> in the original post from Meta, you can get, <clears throat> sorry, I'm trying to find the detailed information. Ah, yes, in the original post, you can see which internet celebrities they used to create these AI bots. So for example, Charlie D'Amelio is Coco, the danced enthusiast. Uh, Mr. Beast is Zach, the big brother who will roast you. I guess it's supposed to be comedy. Naomi Osaka is Tamika, an anime obsessed sailor senshi in training. Um, there's Snoop Dogg as Dungeon Master, choose your own adventure with the Dungeon Master. Tom Brady as Brew, wisecracking sports debater who pulls no punches. I guess there's some novelty value in that. Oh, I should switch my image so you can actually see what it says. I don't personally see the appeal because none of these are celebrities I actually care about. And my guess is that their actual chatting is going to be pretty limited. But if you're interested, you can chat with them in Facebook Messenger and check out their fake profiles on Facebook and Instagram. So those are the big updates for AI, I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. There is an update for musicians and bands, Bandcamp, where a lot of independent bands and musicians share their music, has been acquired by Song Trader. Song Trader is mostly a music licensing company. This was an acquisition from Epic Games, which never really fit with Bandcamp that well. Song Trader has said specifically that they're not going to change any terms for the artists on the platform. And then there may be updates for those artists where they have more opportunities to license their music. So this could be good. This could be bad. <laughs> it's not clear, but it is a major change. And if you have purchased music on Bandcamp, this at least theoretically won't affect what you've purchased, but you may want to make sure you have downloads of any songs just on account, even if there weren't any changes, that would probably be a good idea. So I think those are all the major updates in terms of creator changes. I wanted to mention a couple of Google updates for those of you who are in the whole Google universe. First of all, Google has announced that they are going to be shutting down Jamboard. Jamboard is Google's digital whiteboarding platform, and they sold physical Jamboards, these 55-inch touchscreens, 
the license on those physical jam boards expires next October 1st. So this is a, an announcement a year in advance. So though those licenses expire, they're not going to renew them. They're not going to sell any additional Jamboard hardware. What that means in practical terms is if you're in the Google Workspace universe, they recommend using some third party whiteboarding platforms, which will get integration into Google Workspace including FigJam, uh, LucidSpark, and Miro. They sell some additional newer hardware that's aimed at Meet that will also integrate these third-party whiteboarding platforms. Over the next year, there will be an option to export all your jams if you want to save them. And this probably affects schools and businesses more. And any company that has one of these great big 55 inch Jamboard whiteboards, um, it will no longer connect to the internet. It can be used offline as a great big touch screen. It can be used as a touch screen monitor that you connect to your computer. So it's not like, they will just be e-waste, but they're not going to be useful as a whiteboard anymore. The other update I wanted to mention is that if you use Google Chat, there are a bunch of updates. First of all, if you use Google Chat, you probably have noticed that they changed the layout. Now it gets these little speech balloons And you can see on the screen, if you haven't gotten the update yet, that's what it's going to look like. So instead of it being one long conversation, the, your posts will be on the other side, one side and everybody else's posts on the other, and the posts will be better separated than they used to be. It's supposed to make it more clear to see who's posting. The other update is that you'll be able to easily link to a particular post in your space or one-to-one -one conversation. So I think that's going to be really useful. If you, you are <clears throat> if you are a Google Workspace user and you have a space that has topics, threaded topics, that format is going away. They started the migration to inline threading yesterday. Uh, that will take place over the next few months. And eventually, all of the spaces will look like this, where it's one long conversation. You can have side conversations with inline threading and link to posts. So that is a major change in spaces. Those are all of the updates I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Enjoy your week.